Well, if you live by Ryan Airfield, you've probably heard something about it. El Diablo Guest Ranch, a place also known as a popular retreat in its heyday. But now, what it's known for is the unknown. Rumors have been swirling around about what could now be behind those metal gates that close it all off from the outside. Not in your sides, Liz Kotelik and photographer Alfonso Sagun Casaus got an exclusive look inside, and tonight they explain why all that mystery has led to El Diablo's demise. Time. It's been known to add character, value, purpose. But property owner Marilyn Blankenship knows all too well decades of it have not done any good here. It's been a nightmare. <laughs> But if you could take yourself back to another time, the era of Frank Sinatra, Duke Ellington, on the outskirts of the old Pueblo was El Diablo Guest Ranch. It was very beautiful. It was the place to be. But it got a big boost uh, during World War II because, they, uh, because Ryan Field was established and they're, they're their next door neighbor and, uh, and, and hundreds of servicemen trained uh, at Ryan Field. <laughs> Carlos Lozano volunteers at the Arizona Historical Society and says this was a popular time for guest ranches, and Tucson was at the center of it all. A former governor of Arizona said that Tucson was the guest ranch capital of the world, so, so this is, they came from all over to, to come to these guest ranches. Scores of people, including the mafia. Rumor has it that members travel to El Diablo from all over the country. And that's been uh, pretty well substantiated by, by people I've talked to as well. Perhaps to relax, to hide out. From now on, when I tell you guys to do something. To plot. But whatever their motives, eventually they took it over and the rumors began. Bodies buried on the property. A secret underground hiding place for money, for jewels. But despite those rumors, people still loved it there. They relaxed by and dove into what was known as the largest pool in the state. They collected, I don't know, 50 cents, 75 cents from us or something to go swimming. A pool that has now turned into this. It's saddening. Henry Curtis stands in a dirty, empty hole just above what used to be the deep end that he once swam in as a child. I was here as a kid. I'm here now. And I guess one of these days it'll all be gone. It'll be something else. Henry has watched as his good friend Marilyn and her late husband have tried to clean this all up. Years of different owners and neglect have contributed to the ranch's demise, and what's left are the bones of what was once a known retreat. <laughs> Lucky. What did these used to be? They would call them cabanas. And you could go in there and change into your clothes or into your bathing suit. And now what? Now it's trash. <laughs> But the problem is there are people out there who believe there's more, who think there's something to those rumors that mobsters hid valuables here, leading to looters who have frequented this property for years. Well, actually, my, my husband's brother got shot and killed out here by somebody that came out here that thought there was treasures out here. Shot my, my brother-in-law and also shot another guy that was living out here. Since then, all of this has become even more of a burden. And people are still coming in here and stealing things. Still are. I came out here today, buildings that were supposed to be locked up and doors shut are all open. So after time has passed trying to restore it, trying to make this all work, Marilyn says it's just time. That's kind of life though. Time to say goodbye. It does that to you. <laughs> Liz Kodalik, KGUN 9, on your side. Marilyn tells us she plans to sell the property soon, most likely to the skeet shooting range next door. Mm. She does hope that whoever takes control of the property next can try to keep and restore the pool El Diablo was so well known for. And Kega and I would like to thank the people at Hacienda del Sol for allowing us their property for our reenactments.